Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 23rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The EA Today has yet another document for you that attempts to exploit CVE 2021-4044 for the recently patched MSHTML vulnerability. In this case, however, the attacker went the extra mile and added some additional obfuscation scripts. Of course, no problem for DDE. He has just the Python script for you in order to take care of this obfuscation. The document itself, like I said, is a Word document. Of course, Word documents are zip files that contain XML documents and XML may use entities and you've probably all seen them in HTML where you have an ampersand and then a character code. That's exactly what happened here. The attacker is taking advantage of uh, these uh, numeric character references or entities in order to further obfuscate uh, the document. DDA has his numbers to string script that will convert this and then again make it very easy for you to actually extract the malicious URLs. One interesting side note here uh, from DDA is about the creation of the document. When you unzip it, you get current uh, timestamps. Now, typically in Office documents, those timestamps are set to January 1st, 1980. Not so in this case, according to DDA. That's a pretty good sign that probably this started out as a normal office document, but then one of those exploit tools that have been released that take an office document and add the exploit to it were used in order to modify these files. Also supporting this is that the timestamp is, well, just September 16th, which is about the day when these exploit tools were released. So probably someone couldn't help themselves and applied them to this document. And if you ever connected an email client uh, to an exchange server, you may have gone through the auto discover feature. You essentially give the email client your email address and your password, and it'll magically configure everything for you. This is a feature that's supported in exchange. It's called auto discover. And typically the client will start out by connecting to a web server at autodiscover.yourdomain.com and that seems harmless enough and uh, pretty much is but it will also try to log in at that url and if it can't connect to this url then it'll try to find other urls now the next one it tries may also be obvious enough just a domain itself without the autodiscover uh, prefix but then it also starts autodiscover.com and other top level domains, like for example, autodiscover.com.br, .cn, .co, and so on. The problem is that uh, these additional uh, domains are well outside of your organization, and Exchange does support basic authentication. So if these endpoins offer basic authentication, your username and password is essentially sent to these uh, domains in the clear. Researchers at GuardiCore did experiment with this and registered a couple of these domains that were not already registered. And well, no big surprise here. They had hundreds of thousands of credentials sent to their server. This protocol may also use HTTP, so it's not just limited to HTTPS. And anyone with a machine in the middle position, of course, could also then uh, retrieve uh, these passwords. So users of Outlook and Active Sync, of course, are affected. Uh, other email clients are affected as well that are implementing the auto discover uh, protocol. No patches available as of yet. And uh, one thing that you may do sort of an enterprise level in order to protect yourself is set up DNS records for these auto discover domains. So requests are not leaking outside your network, may very well send them to some kind of sinkhole so you capture which clients are attempting to connect. 
retroactively looking for uh, DNS requests that uh, contain auto discover or also looking at HTTP proxy logs uh, may give you some insight into connection uh, to some of these domains in the past. And if you're running the network monitoring system NAC iOS in order uh, to monitor network, it's time uh, to upgrade NAC iOS uh, XI and uh, other variants of the software are vulnerable to 11 uh, different just patched uh, vulnerabilities disclosed by Clorati. Uh, these vulnerabilities do lead to SQL injection, lead to unauthenticated access uh, to private pages and more. So uh, certainly you do want to patch it and double check that uh, the console is not publicly accessible. And if you're developing software for any Apple operating systems, be it the portable or the desktop laptop type, get ready. You will no longer be able uh, to use TLS 1.0 or 1.1 in your software if you're using the app transport security feature in the software development kit that is provided by Apple. These features will be removed. It's uh, probably time a lot of uh, companies started removing these protocols. Of course, the problem is always some legacy services that you may have to connect to. So you may have to upgrade them. And of course, if that's not possible, the only option you may have is to connect in the clear. This is it for today. And as I say, so often the reason I do this podcast is because people are listening. So if you like them, best thing uh, to keep them coming is uh, to make people uh, listen. I could stop at any time, but well, I just choose not to, as people say. And that's it for today. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.